Okay, so in this question, we're asked to prove the following, that given a regular language L, to show that the reversal of that language is also regular. So essentially what we need to show is we need to show that regular languages are closed under the reversal operation or operator, okay? Which is a unary operator, um, a unary operator on languages, right? So just a reminder, the reversal of a language is just um, taking each of the strings in the initial language L and then reversing those strings. So for instance, if I have a B and then a a B, then the language reversal of L will give me B A and B A A. Okay. So how do I prove this? Well, I need to construct a new machine from the machine that accepts L. Um, and this new machine has to accept the language L reverse. Okay. So um, I know, so, so right, this is the proof. Since L is regular, there exists a DFA M, which I'll call Q, which I'll denote as a five double Q sigma delta Q zero F, such that the language accepted by M is equal to L. Right, so that's uh, the definition of a regular language. Now, to show LR is regular, I construct M prime as follows. Okay, and so I'll denote M prime as Q prime sigma delta prime S for the start state of M prime, F prime, okay? Okay, so before I actually give the construction, let me just give you the idea. So if this machine M is the machine that accepts L, right? So I know it has a start state. I know it has some accept states. Now suppose I take some string that's accepted by M and therefore belongs to L, then that means that there's a walk from Q0 to some final state. Let's say it's this one, okay? So the idea of the machine M prime that should accept the reversal of the language is that it should accept the reverse of W, right? So what M prime should do What M prime should do is that it should have a start state, right? And then if it reads the string W reverse, right? If it reads the string W reverse, then it should end up in an accept state, okay? Well, how can I actually do that? Well, I know that if W is accepted by M, there's a path from Q0 to a final state. And so that means that there's a path from the final state to Q0, which is labeled W reverse, right? Because if I can go from Q0 to the final state with W, then I can go back with W reverse, right? So I can go back with W reverse. Now the only tricky bit here is that I can't then say, okay, well then just make the accept state um, the final states, right? Because in my definition of NFAs, right? Maybe in your definition, you can have multiple start states, but in my definition of NFAs, there's a unique start state, right? And so what I need then is I need to somehow say that um, I can start from any of the final states, 
And then if I take all the transitions backwards and I get to Q0, right, then I'll accept the string. Okay, well, how do I actually do that? I can just say make a new accept state, make a new, sorry, make a new start state. So I can make a new start state outside of M. Okay. And then I can direct it to go to each of the final states. Okay. So it'll go to each of the final states with an empty string transition. And then I just need to reverse all of the transitions in my machine M, right? So that instead of going from Q0 to the final state, I can go from the final state back to Q0. Okay. So then that's going to be the idea, right? So let's see if I just write down the idea first. So I'll need to reverse the transitions of M and start from the final states of M, right? So what that means is that machine M prime, right? so let's just move, so this is M. Uh, let's do it like this. Okay, so this is my machine M. I'm just going to erase this now. And make a new machine M prime. So my machine M prime, it's going to have this new start state, right? Which um, let's call Q0 prime. It's going to have transitions, right? Lambda transitions to each of the final states, right? The final states will no longer be final states because I want uh, to accept a string in M prime only if it starts at the final state and then goes back to Q0. So then what I want in M prime is I want these to just be regular states, right? These will become regular states. And the only accept state will now be the start state in M. Okay, so this guy will be the final state. The last thing that I need to do is I need to reverse the transitions, right? So I need to suppose, um, so reverse the transitions. So suppose in M, I have, let's say, Q1, when you read an A, uh, went to Q3, and then Q2, when you read an A, went to Q3 as well. Maybe like for B, it went somewhere else, uh, for Q1, and then for, for, for Q2, it was a self loop. Okay, remember this is a DFA. So each of the states have uh, a sort of fully specified transition function. Okay, so this is an M. Now um, in M prime, I just have to reverse this, right? So in M prime, if I'm in Q3, then I have to go back if I read an A, right? So reading an A should send me back to either Q1 or back to Q2, okay? So then what this means, right? This means is that the construction of the transition in M prime is going to be slightly tricky to write down, but not impossible, right? Because it'll mean that if I'm in the state, let's say here, in this case, I was in the state Q3, um, and I read an A, okay. In this case, 
I would have to go back to Q1 or to Q2, right? I would need to choose, right? But to write this more generally, right? So imagine this was for any general state and any general letter. What I would need to write is I would need to write that if I'm in a state Q and I'm reading the letter sigma, I have to go back to all the states that would have led to Q reading that letter sigma, okay? So what that means is that to say that I'm going back in M prime just means that I'm finding all of the states in M that would allow me to reach Q when reading sigma. So that means that the transition Q sigma for delta prime is the set of all states such that in M, when I read sigma from P, I go to Q. Right? So this is saying, uh, in natural language, what this is saying is it's saying um, the transition in M prime, right? Uh, when reading, reading sigma in Q in M prime should lead to all the states in M that could reach Q with sigma, okay? So that's what you need to do for the reversal, okay? And so now we have all the pieces to actually formally define or explicitly write out the machine M prime, okay? So Q prime is just going to be the set of states in M, which is Q, union this new initial state that points to all the final states in M, right? That's going to be Q0 prime, okay? The start state in M prime is just going to be this Q0 prime, right? And then the set of final states is no longer going to be a, well, it's still going to be a set, but now it's just going to contain a single state, and that's going to be the initial state from M, right? So this is the initial state from M and this guy is the new start state in M prime that points to all except states in M, okay? So again, the most complicated thing to do here is write down the transition function. So the transition function for any state Q and any letter sigma, well, we can break it down into cases, right? So if the state is this guy, um, Q zero prime, then you can't consume any letter. And the only places that you can go to are final states from M, right? So how I can write that is that if Q is Q0 prime and sigma is empty, then I actually have a set of choices to go to, right? Um, so the set of choices that I can make is the set of final states in M, which um, you'll notice I have denoted as F here. And so if I'm in Q0 prime and I read the empty string, then I can go to any of the except states in M. So then I can go to F, right? So let me just lower this a bit. Oops. Okay. Now, what if I'm not in Q0 prime, right? So if Q is in um, the remaining states, right? And I'm actually reading a letter. 
Okay, if I'm doing that, right, uh, let's see if I can do this. Okay. okay, you know what? This is not working. So let's, let's just compromise and I'll just put a dot here because I need more space to write this. Okay, so if I'm here, right, if I'm in the actual machine here, then I need to go back. Right, I need to reverse the transitions, right? So now here, this is where I need to reverse the transitions in M, okay? And so that's uh, this idea here that I wrote out uh, sort of informally first and then more formally here, okay? That's essentially just checking all the states that can lead to Q in M, right? So then this is a set of states. It could also be potentially empty, right? But it's a set of states such that um, I can reach Q from P reading sigma, right? So this statement, right, this set construction, the set builder notation is just saying this, right? It's just saying all the states in M that can reach Q reading sigma, okay? And so this reverses the transitions because if we have this setup in M, right, then I know that to reverse the transitions Q3 to Q1 should have an A, and Q3 to Q2 should have an A. And that's exactly what this notation is going to do, right? So in M prime, Q3 is going to be all the states, so in this case, Q1 and Q2, that reach Q3 in M, right? And so you just have to realize when you're looking at this, so you have to sit down and kind of think about it a bit more probably, but you have to realize that um, this is how I'm defining the new transition in M prime, and it's based on how the transition in M was working, okay? So here I'm, uh, let's see. So the, the, the sort of crux of this is I'm using the behavior of M to specify the behavior of M prime, which makes sense, right? Because um, that's what it means to sort of reverse something, right? It means to do the reverse of what that thing was doing. So if in M you go forward from Q1 to Q3, then in M prime you go backwards. So you go from Q3 to Q1, but maybe that's not the only place that you can go back to. Maybe there's also Q2, okay? Okay, so, um, this example is probably a bit more complicated than the more fundamental closure properties, but uh, understanding this sort of set builder notation is key to then uh, looking at even more complex closure properties and solving them. Okay, so make sure you can sort of sit down and digest what I've, what I've written um, and don't hesitate to uh, ask any questions.